Uh, now I'd like to introduce Dr. Shirley Edgerton, who is an educator, leader, and community activist. She is the cultural proficiency coach for Pittsfield Public Schools, as well as the director of Youth Alive Performing Arts, a member of the executive committee of the NAACP and founder and director of the Rights of Passage and Empowerment Program. Ms. Edgerton has received numerous recognitions as well as two honorary doctorates from Lady of the Elms College and Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts for her outstanding service to children and community. Um, she attended Herbert Lemon College and received a BA as well as Atlanta University of Social Work and Massachusetts College of Atlanta where she earned a master's in education. In 2010, Ms. Edgerton launched Rites of Passage and Empowerment, known as ROPE, a mentoring program for girls dedicated to celebrating womanhood and supporting young adolescent girls as they transition into women. They develop skills, knowledge, and experiences they need to become successful and independent adults. The program focus includes self-development opportunities, college tours locally and biannually to historically black colleges and universities, along with international travel to South and West Africa to develop global citizenship. So please let's turn our attention to their presentation called Tools for Real Conversation. Thank you. Shirley? Hi. Hi. Good morning. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, and to join uh, such an important uh, conversation. Um, so this morning, we have two youth leaders who will presenting on uh, the topic of having difficult conversations. So our two facilitators are um, Sadia Quetty Goodson, and Ornella Bamba. I know she's having a little technical issue. Is she here? Okay. So both of our presenters um, are seniors in high school. Sadia is a student at Pittsfield High School and Ornella is a senior at Taconic High School. Both of these outstanding scholars uh, are on their way to college in the fall they are members of the Rites of Passage and Empowerment Program, of which you've heard a little bit about. Um, these two young women are also activists and leaders in the communities, <clears throat> in, in our communities. Their voices are often called upon to represent um, the concerns of young people, as well as issues around social justice. So I'm very excited and proud of these two young ladies, and they will um, take us through the conversation this morning. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I apologize in advance. Sometimes my Zoom goes a bit in and out. Um, and I think Ornella's camera is a little funky today. Um, but I hope everyone is doing well on this beautiful day. As Miss E mentioned, my name is Sadia. My, pronoun my pronouns are she, hers, and I'm a senior at Pittsfield High School. A little bit about me, 17 years old. I am a younger sibling, and pre-COVID, I was involved with many clubs and activities, such as Dance Club at Pittsfield High, Students Who Have a Voice, many athletics and theater, as well as ropes. Um, and I'm going to pass my microphone to my partner in crime today, Miss Ornella. Hi, everybody. So as you heard, I'm having technical difficulties. I cannot um, turn on my camera, so we're just going to have to do it like this. So thank you, Sadia. Good morning. Awesome. So what is a difficult conversation? A difficult conversation is any conversation in which there are strong differences of opinion between two people and has the potential to become emotional. And really quickly, I think I am going to try to screen share our presentation. Um, let's see if it will let me. All right. Can everyone see my screen? I think, oh, that's the wrong thing. All right, let's see. 
Wait, so do, how can I do it so that like I can pin your your um you so like you won't go anywhere? I don't know if it'll work. Um, I do not know, Arnella. Um, is everything all set technical wise, everyone? Yeah. yeah. We can see your screen. Okay. All right. Perfect. So, why are difficult conversations important? So. Difficult conversations are inevitable. We will all encounter them at some point in our lives. The majority of us already have, most likely. And the sooner you think about it and think about how you will respond to them and positively interact, the better experiences you will have with them. Another reason is they help create a better understanding between people. If there is a problem or a situation where there is tension or confusion, with difficult conversations, we can work that out and find a solution. Okay. It also broadens our perspective. It reminds us not to be close to other people's opinions. And also it helps us better yourself and your mindset. We all want a better mindset. We want to evolve. All right. And so now we can talk about what you can do when you reach a difficult conversation. So one strategy method comes in these four steps on this screen. So this will help break down your thought process and create time to, for you to think and respond with what you actually want to say. So step one, reiterate, restate what you heard. This step enables you to reflect on what you have heard as opposed to what you think you may have heard. Repeating what you have heard limits miscommunication and misinformation. Step two is to contemplate. Contemplate before responding. Students can think about their responses and use the time to compose what they want to say. Taking the time to think about their responses helps move students away from immediate emotional responses that can potentially derail the conversation. Step three, respire. Take a deep breath to check in with yourself. Suggesting a deep breath before responding may help you settle your thoughts and emotions before difficult conversations. Students should be able to speak to their best as they want to be spoken to, assuming good attentions and seeking understanding. Explain that when they disagree with something someone has said, they should focus on challenging the statement rather than the person who said it. And on this next slide, this is just another video or visual um, that may help with your thinking process for these difficult conversations. So as we said before, step one is to be aware. So be an active listener. Examples of active listening is, can be seen in these three A's, which is attitude, attention, and adjustment. So patience is a part of being an active listener. Listen to what they're saying. Let the person who you're speaking to finish all of their sentences. Um, and then Did we lose Sadia's audio? Sadia, are you there? For spot, make sure you consider all sides of the story as well as the other person's emotions. And lastly, you get to your decision to how you respond and you respond in what you feel is right. So I believe at this time, we are actually going to head on into our breakout rooms, if I'm correct. I think everything's a little, let's see. Sorry, we've never really done screen sharing before, so it's a little fishy. But um, in our breakout room, we are going to first see if anyone has any questions. Um, and then we're going to talk about, you know, personal experiences and how we handle these situations. Um, for example, I am a member of the club SWAF, students who have a voice. At I think we lost the D's uh, audio. Oh gosh, okay, just give me one moment. 
That's, that's okay, um, Sadia. Um, yes, we will have to break out rooms um, in probably, I think in our schedule um, would say uh, 1025 on that. Um, so, I, I mean, if, if Sadia, you, you know, you guys have a few extra minutes, if you want to go over, you know, take a few extra minutes just to kind of really sum up some of your presentation or, you know, feel free to do so, Shirley or any, anyone in the group. So, thank you. Sadi, are you there? Or are you? I believe so. Can everyone hear me? I think I just keep cutting out a little bit. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Do you yes. want to continue? Sure. So, um, so my personal experiences with difficult conversations come um, uh, within school. So I have a teacher named Barr, and we in his class we purposefully come across difficult topics um, as a way to build our communication skills that we know that we will have more in the future. So um, another, um, another example of um, difficult conversations in school for me is, I think I might be frozen again, um, is the group SWAP, as I mentioned earlier. So this stands for students who have a voice. Uh, and this is a group about, of students, students only, um, around uh, difficult conversations. So we discuss current events that might make us feel uncomfortable and other uncomfortable topics, but it is all to create a better understanding and to just have a safe space to express ourselves um, and communicate better. Ornella, do you have any examples in your personal life that you'd like to share? So in school, when it's around like Black History Month, we name like the halls after like people that meant stuff in history. We put like presentations on the slideshow. It helps like the students of color have a voice more and not the school be so bland. And that's why it helps start like a step team too, so we can be more noticed. And Miss E, would you like to share anything? Yeah, I've... Um... Difficult conversations are, um, can be challenging be often because it's hard to acknowledge the possibility of conflict. It's hard sometimes to um, leave yourself vulnerable and open to criticism. So part of the, develop, the developing the skills and abilities um, and using the strategies that Sadia and Ornella uh, shared is it's you also have to do some personal work in terms of building up your self confidence um, and knowing that you as an individual you know you 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 have a right as a, as a human being to share what you're thinking and feeling and when you're talking about your feelings um, it's okay because that's how you that's how you learn and grow. You know, and I can't tell you how many times I've put myself out there uh, expressing what I'm feeling. And you can't argue with my feelings. These, it's, it's my feeling. It's, it's I own it, you know. Um, but it's certainly a good way to enlighten yourself for you to find out whether your feelings really can transition into a fact or um, into um, uh, useful information. So sometimes um, I think it's a great thing to be able to push ourselves um, to, to leave our comfort zone, to ask those questions and engage in conversations where you, not, you may not quite know what, um, what the response will be. When I was in middle school uh, and high school, which probably to some of you seems like it was a million years ago that I must have been there, um, but I was what we call painfully shy. I mean, I barely would open my mouth. Um, and in the classroom, I always tried to keep my head down so the teacher wouldn't call on me. Um, if there were 
conversations going on around race or um, any controversial issues back in, you know, the Vietnam War for me, um, the uh, civil rights movement. I initially, I tried hard to avoid those conversations, but then I realized that those things were impacting me. Um, that you, that, that because I'm on this planet, you know, um, I should think about um, the things that involve my life from a personal perspective to a larger, um, a larger space. And then I began to first have conversations with family members and friends whom I knew that I had a trusted relationship with and who would be gentle with my feelings. Um, so yeah, so I, I have moved in my life from being someone that was very painfully shy to someone that often is called upon to speak publicly and to share perspective um, for others. So there, it, it is a, it's a great process and it certainly also makes you feel better about yourself. Thank you, Ms. E.